Good morning. Let me add my welcome uh, to Washington. Karen and I have conspired to provide as warm a weather as we can here <laughs> from your swampy ca capital. So uh, enjoy soaking down. I know those of you from the south, this is just normal uh, trade winds for you. So uh, we have an exciting conference for you. We've got about the same numbers as we did last year. What's exciting is about a third of the participants this year are young professionals or students. Uh, so that's a great sign for the association. Before I get into the presentation, uh, Gillian has alluded to this, as, as has Karen. Um, I know there's something that's sort of on everyone's mind, a little bit on my mind as well, is uh, there's a, another transition uh, forthcoming. Many of you know that uh, later in June I'll be leaving the association. Uh, I've had a tremendous experience here. I'm uh, leaving to become the head of the Foundation for the National Archives, which is the private arm to the National Archives. And for those of you who know a little bit about my bio, I uh, spent the first half of my career in the arts and culture sector, so this was uh, sort of a, uh, a coming together, a full circle for me professionally and personally. Uh, so I won't be far, as Karen has uh, practically recruited me to the NCA board, uh, <laughs> but I will definitely be a member of the local chapter, uh, continue to be an advocate, and uh, I expect this transition to be very different because, as we will uh, outline for you here in the next couple minutes, UNA is in a very different place than it was three years ago, uh, and, and El Ed Elmendorf can, can speak to that uh, explicitly, <laughs> as many of you experience it. There were lots of questions uh, before I came on and as I came about, the future of UNA, the health, the financial health of UNA, the administration of UNA, uh, the membership of UNA, and all of those things are really in the rearview mirror. And I think that's what's exciting, and I hope we can celebrate here over the next uh, couple days and really focus on, especially as we go up uh, on Capitol Hill, you are a part of a movement that's growing in the United States uh, that has a voice, and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about those successes now. So what have we been up to the last year, uh, year or so since uh, we last gathered? Obviously, we had a tremendous Members' Day. Hundreds of, of UNA members and non-members uh, came together at the UN uh, for Members' Day. We had uh, another almost dozen global classrooms model UN conferences around the country. Uh, UNA Women, our first affinity group, which I know met earlier today, has grown to more than 1,000 members, which is tremendous. Uh, and uh, our UN days continue to be a great success. Um, you'll, we'll talk a little bit in, in a second about what chapters are doing on these UN days, but uh, this is a great rallying point and a focus point for chapters to engage the public in their communities. The Leo Nevis Human Rights Program continues to uh, make quite a difference in, in our policy work, and uh, Ryan Kaminsky, who may or may not be in the room right now, there he is in the back, has been our Human Rights Fellow this past year, so I hope you have a chance to chat with him. He's done a tremendous job. The Council of Organizations has uh, continued to be our, our association inside of our association for the NGO community, uh, and has continued to grow and done some uh, terrific programs in New York to bring together the NGO community and our relationship with Seton Hall, which many of you know John Whitehead, a longtime supporter of UNA. We continue this fantastic relationship with Seton Hall, the Whitehead School of International uh, Relations and Diplomacy. Uh, we continue to do a program, and actually next week, they will be running our one, one week long program uh, to professional development, um, continuing education program on the UN. So, uh, so there's a lot of things going on at the national level and we continue to work with chapters, divisions, and regions. There's a couple of things I wanted to put a fine point on that I think we're particularly proud of. One is our relationship with the Department of State. Uh, as many of you know, our intersection with the Department of State is the Bureau of International Organizations. They were our host last year when we were at the State Department. Uh, uh, Assistant Secretary Esther Brimmer spoke to us, and she's actually been out to a number of chapters here over the last couple of years. Uh, that relationship continues to grow. In fact, they, uh, through our conversations, came to us and asked us to take, uh, codify our Model UN materials to help us push them out to all the embassies around the world. So we've, uh, we've done this, we've created a, a sort of a very small a simulation, some educational materials, a how-to. This goes out to public affairs officers, foreign service officers, and embassies all over the world. It was translated into five languages, I think, and uh, they're already using it. We rolled it out on Earth Day. Uh, this simulation um, focuses on climate change, 
And uh, so they're already testing this around, uh, around the world. So uh, UNA's model, U model UN materials are an example, not just uh, in the education sector for these things, but the State Department is using them and pushing them out. Part of this uh, relationship has also helped us uh, build a, uh, a, a conversation and a relationship with the Foreign Service Institute, which is based in Arlington, Virginia. This is where all the Foreign Service officers are trained, and they come back and get additional training throughout their career. So we go out from time to time, a couple times a year, and uh, provide a lecture on what UNA USA is, about our model UN materials, the kind of resources we have, and it's a great way for us to build a rapport with these Foreign Service officers who end up all around the world, but eventually come back to Washington at some point, and we have direct opportunity to interact with them. Uh, the U.S. mission to the U.N. in New York continues to be a great partner, not just for our Global Classrooms programs in New York, but also uh, we've done uh, some uh, video conferencing with uh, students uh, here in the United States and students around the world, and uh, they continue to help foster events that are happening uh, in the uh, New York area. I know they've been assisting the COO on events, uh, our Members' Day, and so forth. And the last one uh, I wanted to mention we're particularly proud of, and this has to do with the State Department. It took us about nine months to write the same memo several times, but we finally got them to realize how important it is to get U.S. youth engaged in the U.N. And uh, this was under the tenure of Secretary Clinton, uh, but they made a pitch. Uh, m many countries have a youth delegate, and they decided to create a youth observer position for the U.S., and I think Brooke Logren is here. Yes, please stand up, Brooke. She's with us. Uh, Brooke was selected uh, from over 700 applicants that came in in a matter of two weeks. Uh, we, the State Department wasn't so big on lead time for us, so we had a very short window to collect applicants, vet them, Put the, uh, we, we helped uh, organize sort of a set of finalists, and then ultimately the State Department and, and Ambassador Rice selected Brooke to be the first ever U.S. US Youth Observer to uh, the U.N. Uh, she found out on Friday and uh, was in New York on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily she was in Boston at Boston College, so it wasn't too big of a commute. And uh, that next week uh, during the General Assembly week, <laughs> we organized a schedule where she had a chance to participate in a number of UN events and then side events that were happening that the foundation was involved with. She met an array of people. If you haven't been on our website, unausa.org slash US Youth, I encourage you to go there. She's got a blog, tons of photos. Uh, she even met a hometown hero, Bill Gates, uh, at one point. So uh, it was a tremendous experience. And she came back in October to New York to, uh, to participate in the ECOSOC conversations and youth conversations, meet the other youth delegates. She hosted a couple of programs uh, with the U.S. mission and other missions and their, their youth delegates. She's visited some chapters, and it's just been a tremendous uh, experience, both for us and for her, and what we like to say is for the U.S. mission. It's a great uh, PR tool. So we have indication, but no affirmation yet, that they liked it so much that we're going to do it again. So hopefully in the next month or so, We'll hear uh, the final word from the State Department, and that's when we'll again uh, put out the announcement for applicants. So we hope that you will encourage youth from uh, your chapters to participate. It's a great opportunity and experience, and if you want to know more, uh, Brooke can give you song and verse about what an amazing opportunity it was. Uh, so the pile of business cards and, uh, and networking that she's done is, is pretty impressive. Um, it was so fantastic, we made a little movie about her. And so if you go on our website, it's called Yo! for the Youth Observer. And uh, it's about a 10 minute a 10 minute video that really outlines the experience, uh, gives you a flavor for it, but we're also using it as a marketing tool as we do it again next year and in future years for people who are interested in applying what is the experience. So you get to hear her voice, you hear about some of the other uh, youth delegates she interacts with and so forth. So uh, I encourage you to go to the website and, uh, and check out our yo. Uh, the other one, which uh, is to Gillian's point, we've been doing a little, uh, making some inroads with the Department of Defense. Not one you would think would be our normal ally per se, but uh, Gillian's outreach to West Point has been quite successful. Uh, you'll recall uh, over the last six months we created a new affinity group called UNA Veterans, much like UNA Women. This is, uh, <coughs> this is an interest group of some veterans that are in our membership saying, what if we got more veterans talking 
uh, about the importance of the UN. And so over the course of the next few months, we're going to start recruiting for that. And we hope to launch that on Veterans Day this fall formally. So if you're interested, if you're a veteran or you have members in your chapter who you think would be interested in that, I think we've got a, a one-pager either in the registration materials or at registration. Um, you can take back with you. You'll see it in our emails and so forth. But uh, we think this is a great advocacy tool for us to get veterans in UNA chapters talking about the UN. Uh, and then lastly, some of you heard about this yesterday at the Model UN Roundtable, is the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies, which is uh, out in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, this was uh, an opportunity Josh Cooper, who is uh, sort of the lead in the uh, Hawaii chapter out there, uh, that brought to us a chance to bring our education materials and Model UN materials into what they do two or three times a year, which is sort of military training for um, military leaders in the Asia Pacific Rim that they bring to uh, to Hawaii for like a four or six week training and they end they've been ending with a simulation uh, around six party talks which hasn't really been working and so this time uh, we proposed Security Council reform and so they actually used our global classrooms materials with some coaching from Josh around doing a sim there and you can see this uh, this happened about three weeks ago out in uh, in, in Honolulu, and it was a tremendous success. They loved it, and they're going to now integrate this into it. So we're making some inroads in, into the Defense Department as well. A couple other things just to touch base on. The Interdependent, I know many of you missed the hard copy dropping into your mailbox, but it continues to live online. We're posting probably three to four articles uh, a week. Um, we've been focusing on just about everything the UN does, uh, but in particular, we started to highlight some more one-on-one -on -one interviews with key UN officials. So I really encourage you to use this as a tool to stay up to speed with what's going on at the UN and uh, share that with your members. And then uh, just two other things I want to mention. The uh, chapter annual report. So each of you in your registration packet got an annual report for your chapter. You'll remember, uh, those who are here last year, is the first time we did this. So every year, chapters are required as part of your affiliation agreement to report your activities for the year before. So in January, February, March, we collect that material for you. And it's not just for us to sit in Washington and, and think deep thoughts. Oh, this is very interesting what's happening in Iowa. But in fact, what we're doing is creating a report and reflecting it back to you. And we want you to use this as a tool with your boards, uh, within your region. Uh, it gives you a chance to sort of see how you measure up. It's not a competition, but it does give you a sense of what's happening around, uh, around the country. So you know, the size of your chapter, the kind of events you're doing, the impact, communications, advocacy. These are all things we want all chapters doing. We know every chapter is different, different community, different context, different partners, but um, we want you to foster dialogue. And we'll talk a little bit about this in the upcoming board development uh, one. As you set goals for your chapter, the, um, the annual reports is a good way for boards to discuss what you're doing, what you're spending your energy and resources on, because I know it's limited. I wanted to pull out one thing from, uh, from the inner report looking at last year to this year. So last year, this is a word cloud. In the report, we ask you, give us, I think it's one word or three words that describes your chapter. So last year, that's uh, the size of the word represents how many times it was used. So you'll see aging, diverse, dedicated, engaged, growing, resilient. This year, Aging got a little bit smaller, but it's still up there. <laughs> Dedicated, growing, committed, older, old. I think we get the theme there. Uh, enthusiastic, passive, diverse. Um, but we also have, you know, in here, we're starting to see some new words. Um, one favorite, it's a little tough on the screen to see, is somebody put peaceniks. So uh, I don't know if that's a growing segment of the membership, but I mean, we know where the peaceniks are out there for sure. Uh, passionate, stable, intelligent. Um, so there's, you know, it's a wide range, just like <coughs> UNA is really a, you know, it's a snapshot of, of the U.S., snapshot of the membership in the U.N. Um, but what we want to see, hopefully, over the course of time, these annual reports 
um, will give us longitudinal information about our association. So it is vital that you fill in those annual reports. I know it takes a little bit of legwork to pull the financials together, the information together, but it is worth it because you're going to get it back. It's going to give you a benchmark for where you're at and where your board and your, your, your chapter can go. Uh, but it also helps us give a sense of what are the services we should be providing at the national level. Wow, in this region, we're going to work with this regional rep to look at these issues. Um, or there's a gap here, we need to help. So, uh, so I encourage you to look at those while you're here. If you have questions about what's in the report, please see Monica Johnson, who is right over here. Um, she is the guru of the annual reports on staff. And, um, and I think you'll find that um, it'll be really helpful for you. So lastly, uh, before I'm going to turn the microphone over to my, my colleague, talk about what's ahead, um, I want to talk about the 70th anniversary. As you know, we're celebrating our 70th year. We had a terrific event. There's sort of three big moments where we're looking at the 70th, both members, uh, members' day at the UN and at the meeting. And then this fall, we'll be out in San Francisco, the birthplace of the UN, uh, for uh, an intergenerational model UN and reception uh, that uh, East Bay and the, and the uh, Northern California, San Francisco chapter are helping to put on. And then um, we're also asking all the chapters to celebrate the 70th by giving out a 70th anniversary chapter award. Now, this has been in the chapter leader update. Um, we have more information in the reg, reg materials on the thumb drive. So actually, oh, I took mine off. Can yeah. I borrow yours? So. Karen Mulhauser for a moment. All right, so <laughs> this is your name badge, right? And you know, click it or ticket, this is going to be click it and learn. So this is a flash drive. I don't know if you know that or not, but this is where all the toolkits are. All the information that's been handed out, we're going to keep mentioning the toolkits, toolkits, toolkits. They're on the website uh, as well, and I'm going to let Karen click it back together so I don't bust hers. Um, uh, but uh, it is on there. We have some very broad guidelines for these awards. It's really a chance for the chapters to acknowledge someone who's been really important to your chapter and to your community and uh, a chance for us to celebrate it. And, and I'll show you how we're going to do that on the website. So we've just launched uh, yesterday our 70th anniversary website, which is part of our website. So if you go to unausa.org slash 70, you can see this. So we've got a, a timeline. You've got the dates on the bottom. If you just click that, you can slide it to the right, and you'll go through uh, UNA USA's timeline. Um, if you have ideas for things that should be on there, important moments in our history that are not on there, you can contact the staff. Renee Trainer is, uh, is our online communications specialist, and she uh, is the, uh, the master of the timeline. So, uh, so this is a great interactive tool. You can click on each one and learn a little bit more, see the photos and so forth. Um, we're also highlighting 70 leaders. We've got some up there to start off, um, but we'll be adding profiles throughout the year. And so that's a great way to, to, to feature some of our folks who have uh, really been uh, important in our uh, history. And then we've got some quotes. And what's interesting about this, uh, I've got one here from, this is actually from our uh, Members' Day. Um, you can add your own quote while you're here. So if you uh, are getting Wi-Fi, you click on this. Uh, add your comment, and as we go through the conference, you can make a, uh, a, a comment about the, the organization and our 70th anniversary. So uh, as the year goes on, we expect to see some, some, fun, uh, some fun quotes from members. So right now, we've got a map here of some of the awards, awardees we're going to give out uh, at this conference, but what we're going to turn that into is the 70th chapter awards. So as your chapter gives out an award, we're going to add a dot and we'll add a profile of that awardee so they'll be able to see themselves online. And then the last part of the 70th uh, website is uh, the lifetime members. So all of our lifetime members are listed there by state. So we've got uh, a tremendous story to tell. I think w the thing I want you to take away from this presentation and from, uh, from this conference, really, when you go back and talk to your members about What's the status of affairs at UNA USA? Is we have more chapters, we're growing as a network, we have more members. Uh, when I came on to UNA USA, we had under 10,000, and now we have over 14,000 paid members. And as part of Gen UN, we actually are, are uh, which are the free memberships and so forth, we started over the last six months, we're over 18,000. So uh, this is an organization that is strong and is healthy. We're seeing, as the annual reports have told us, 
there are more local events happening by UNA chapters. So you are building your capacity. You're doing more events locally, which is fantastic. And there's absolutely more advocacy happening. More in-district meetings, more emails, more phone calls, more Hill visits. We've got over 100 uh, Hill visits that are going to happen on Tuesday. Uh, so you're, you are a part of something that is uh, very powerful. It has a voice. It matters. And the UN is counting on us. Uh, so that's a little bit about looking back. And I'm going to ask Mary Frances to come forward and uh, tell us a little bit about what's going forward.